Ladies and gentlemen, I've been stranded. This is the new Pixel Watch 2. I daily drive the Pixel Watch 1 from 2022. And this thing is e-waste because, oh my God, that's a nice presentation. You can't replace the screen easily. Mine is scuffed. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I don't know how they happen. I can't be arsed to have a case on it. And it is what it is, everybody. And now they've come out with a new version that basically addresses all the stuff that you hate from the old one. Namely, that it had a four-year-old SOC. This one only has a one-year-old SOC. No updates on repairability for this puppy. It's the same chassis, same screen, everything. So let's set it aside though. Let's check out what else is in this very cool box. On this side, there's a lightning bolt. That means power. It's the same charger that I've got. It does not look as cool as like the Apple Ultra Watch 2 charger. That's metal. The magnet on it is okay. Oh, it actually looks a little different. It's got these little pins on it. Mine doesn't have that. And they actually retract when I press them. How queer, how does that work? The, the back of the watch is different. Look at that, a clear difference. And I wonder if that has anything to do with how sticky this is on it or how fast it can charge. Uh, you can see they're in a square pattern. So can I go on a diamond? Like, do I now have to like stick it correctly? Because on, on mine, I just put it on whatever. Maybe if I align the cable with the crown, it's like, yeah, that's what I would do. A satisfying click, I just heard that. And you can see it illuminating. Now, the old watch, there's no way in hell. It doesn't even, it's like, get me out of here. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 I don't like it. I don't, I don't want it. The other section has what looks like a watch band. Let's see, oh, it's blue. Uh, what's on there now it appears to be the shorter one, which I'm sure is fine. The mechanism to get it on off is a little weird, but it's not that weird. Press this section in and then push this to the side. So in sideways, and then you enter from the far side that is depressible and then click over. That was easy. <sighs> I could sell these things like that ShamWow guy. Wow. The major consequence of having the older SOC on the original that people hated was the battery life. You could get 24 hours of battery life on this thing. You can see that I don't have it all always on display though. I have to flick it to turn it on, which is the setting. And the other thing is that they made a big deal of the heart rate monitoring being constant on this thing and their algorithms being able to do it so effectively that it wouldn't like matter for your battery life, which come on, if your watch sucks at battery life, let me turn off extra stuff that I may not need like constant heart rate. Look, I'm getting excited about it. <laughs> on this one, they are advertising 24 hours of always on display, largely because of the new more efficient chip. Now the milliamp hours of these things, the battery capacity is slightly different, slightly. So the battery life gain you're getting isn't really from the battery change. It seems like it's mostly coming from the CPU. Let's get this thing paired. It's already asking me, set up your new watch, continue. I'll use an old, I'll do location. What's the harm there? Surveillance capitalism. Wear OS 4 is on this watch now. It's coming to my watch by the end of the year apparently, but it's on here now. And that is helping you get faster charging on this thing with your new fancy do you hit you with its four contact points. This thing will charge to 50% in 30 minutes and 100% in 75 minutes, which is pretty good. I will admit I, this watch needs to be charged pretty often and for a pretty long time. If you plug it in for like a solid half hour every morning or every night when you're like brushing your teeth or in showering and stuff, you can kind of get by but I do have a bit of charge anxiety. They're touting this new restore and backup feature. And on first glance, I'm like, who cares? What's on my watch that I need to like restore and backup? But I learned the hard way. If you go into your Bluetooth devices list and you click on this watch and you say, forget this device, like you want your phone to just not pair it or whatever, you have to factory reset the device. And that means you're gonna lose all your data. With Wear OS 4's backup, you shouldn't have that problem. It's like, at least they were able to solve it some way. Cause that was just like, I was losing my mind. And the only reason I had to forget all the devices is because my Pixel was being so stupid with Bluetooth devices for a bit there. So it's, it's Google all around. So Google, you suck, but thank you for doing something. Love, hate relationship with these guys right now. Oh, all right. They're advertising the new safety features here that I don't have. I'm living life on the edge. Access safety features on your watch when it's connected to your phone or Wi-Fi. SOS, quickly call emergency contacts. Share your real-time location automatically in emergencies. And set a safety check to alert others if you don't arrive safely. So this is a cool thing where, you know, share my live location is pretty cool, but it's a battery drain. This is more like share my live location at a particular time if I haven't gotten home yet. And when you share the live location, it's not just the live location, it's also my battery level 
and phone call status. Not sure what that means. Like currently on the phone talking to somebody, I guess. Other things that are new on Wear OS 4 is new apps, Gmail, and Google Calendar are getting their own apps. And I researched it and there's been no word from Microsoft on whether or not we're getting Teams. That would be the trifecta. You can get the assistant now to put things on your watch that it couldn't before, including like your schedule and, and stuff like that. I guess it's connected to the calendar thing. A pattern or pin on your watch, I just cannot get behind. I think, I think that's, just, every time dee 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 sucks. And the worst thing, you need to enable that. You must, if you wanna bing, NFC tap for payment. Give me the freedom. What else, what apps do they recommend for your watch? I've already got the camera, which I believe is mostly for like, you know, everyone say cheese, shutter button, uh, Google Photos, Spotify, and recommender for watches. Oh, they don't even show you what it is. <laughs> they just say, trust us, you're gonna like these. You can double tap the crown to get to your wallet, but it looks like for the emergency SOS calling, you just tap it five or more times. So you just spam it, I'm in trouble! And I think that's pretty intuitive. Another thing that they have, if you launch the personal safety app, which is the Google app, I didn't know, you can add your medical information to this. And then if you do an SOS call, the emergency responders will have that information. Knowing your blood type ahead of time, I mean, maybe that'll make the difference. Google also sells a medical ID tag that you can attach to the watch band. Maybe that's really great for you. It's not available in Canada though. You can get it in the US and UK. It's $9.99. Every one of these has an eSIM in it that'll be used for a lot of these emergency services, whether or not you have LTE. This will have fall detection that will call emergency services automatically. It's very cool, but even though you have the eSIM, you still need to have a premium Fitbit account to get these safety services. <laughs> I mentioned the LTE, let me just rapid fire some specs at you. Two gigabytes of RAM, it's LPDDR5. 32 gigabytes of eMMC flash memory. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and the option for LTE, but that's a different option. $50 price difference there. And the IP rating, they gave it an official rating this time. Last time, they just, they didn't. <laughs> and they just said, it's good for five atmospheres, which is about 50 meters underwater. But still, we wanted to know, can I go in a pool for half an hour? I don't know. It's harder to shop across like products when they don't have the like certifications. This time, IP68, they just said it. I've been showering with mine all the time, almost daily. I love showers and it's been fine. We'll talk more about the screen, the colors, and the activity stuff right after this message from our sponsor, Big Big Wand. Get some big, big performance from Big Big Wand's Rainbow 2 Pro Controller. It has Hall Effect triggers, a trigger stop switch, customizable pulling rates of up to 1,000 hertz, and the big, big bonus of a built-in audio jack. Best of all, it has automatic calibration to reduce joystick drift, saving you a big, big headache. And if you're a big, big gamer, they're really leaning into this. <laughs> it's compatible with a bunch of platforms from Xbox to PC. It would be a big, bad mistake to sleep on the big, big one controller. Check it out the link below. Do this now or you are a big, big silly head. I wanna talk about the screen. It's the same screen. It has the same TPI, which is 320 pixels per inch. It uh, is Gorilla Glass 5 which as we've seen, and the brightness is up to a thousand nits. I find I do use the flashlight quite often. Really cool that it has uh, white and then red. You know, don't wake the baby or, or just hurt your eyes at night. It's fine, it's bright enough. Don't use it to like go hiking, but you could use it to, you know, you're walking along the highway at night before you witness some teenagers kill someone by accident and then, and uh, you know, just so people could see you're there walking your dog or whatever. I know what you did last summer. Has anyone's, I'm old, has anyone seen? <laughs> There's a new multi-path heart rate sensor. So, you know, I went to the launch event for this thing and they were telling me how good their heart rate sensor is, but now it's 40% better. <laughs> 25, 25 times more LEDs and diodes than the watch one for better heart rate tracking and everything that goes with it. So let's see, can we actually see that? Can we see the diodes? No. I mean, maybe if you, it looks like one blinky green, but I bet if you looked really close, you'd see a lot of blinking greens and you'd even see more of them on the new one. Specifically, they say it's 40% more accurate heart rate readings during intense cardio, which you're doing, like HIIT training. I would love to use these features more. Unfortunately, I can't wear a watch during my sport, which is jujitsu, because I'm so cool. If you are into one of these seven other sports, running, walking, outdoor biking, indoor biking, okay. <laughs> Treadmilling, <laughs> rowing, and elliptical, those things now are, automatically detected. I think 
I'm not sure how many of those are new. Some of those were already, already automatically detected. But the thing there is you're riding your bike and then your watch just goes, oh, workout detected. And they're saying that it's better at that now than it was before. The Apple Watch is famously bad for that. There's a new skin temp sensor. Can that just tell me what my, how hot I am? Can you quantify this? <laughs> you're a six out of 10. <laughs> Um, and new electrodes for CEDA, C-E-D-A, which enables stress detection, which my watch has, but they're doing it through body response, which was enabled on the Fitbit Sense 2. I, in, in the Fitbit app that I have, they have stress, it's not stress detection. They can like make a stress log, which is pretty dumb. It's too qualitative, right? You're like, today was pretty bad, but I had a coffee. Uh, I don't know, I, I'd rather have something more quantitative, like that tweet I posted about LTX, you could see my heart rate spiking in correspondence with the game shows we were hosting on stage. Yeah, um, something like that I think is more useful and you get it here. What does that look like? We're never gonna know <laughs> what that looks like because I'm not upgrading, you guys. I'm not doing it. For LTE, it's 400 US dollars. For non-LTE, it's 350. I might consider doing like a little selfish upgrade for the battery life. Um, if it weren't for the fact that, you know, I'm gonna have to do a huge price cut because the thing is scuffed and there's no easy way to replace it. So that's why I'm saying I'm stranded. I'm probably just gonna have to wear this thing to the ground because the knowledge that it's just gonna be e-waste if I don't is, is, is too taxing on me. And that's not changed on the new one. So if you don't want that to happen to you two to three years from now, don't buy this. That stuff notwithstanding, it seems like the watch they should have launched last year. Although I'm not a power user, I really just, I need notifications on my wrist. That's about it. And the sleep tracking is okay, but it's honestly not that accurate. Sometimes it's like, you, you had a great sleep when I feel like poop. So like probably should have just got like some kind of used last gen Samsung, but you gotta wear this thing and it's gotta look good. And I like the way these look, look at all the colors you can get. They're pretty cute. I think my wife saw this one when I got it. It was like, oh, that's, that's not that dumb. Maybe I could be seen in public with that. So that's worth something. So that's it guys, if you liked this video, why not watch another video where we cover watches? We just had some Apple Watch videos, Ultra videos, and, or the Pixel phone. It looks like this was smaller than the other non-pro from last year. I mean, I have a case on, but the screen is smaller. I'm gonna go back. I love small phones.